right, let's uh, go through installing NSA's GIDRA reverse engineering program. They released it uh, yesterday at RSA, so now it's a good time to put this into production for uh, analyzing malware. So to install is pretty easy. This is on a Cent OS 7 uh, VMware. So all we need to do first is make sure we got the right version of Java. So let's So to quickly do that, we're just going to type in java-version. Uh, we do not. We need 11.02. So you, you can get it from or from Sun, uh, Oracle, and get their Java. And uh, the one we want is the 11.02, and we do want the development kit. So I've already downloaded that file. So we'll go ahead and uh, install that. And we're just going to do a yum local install and the developer kit. So it'll run through the installation, get any dependencies it needs. Um, we just have to hit yes here and off to the races. Once it's done, we'll also want to uh, to run the alternatives config and make sure that this is in there. And that's uh, also pretty simple to do. All right, that's done. So we'll do the alternatives now. And what we're going to want to do is the one that has the plus sign beside it here. That's the JDK 1102 right there. So we And that's the default. So if we just hit enter, we're good. If by chance that's not selected, just type in the number for the one that you need. Okay, so now if we do the Java version again, we now have... The runtime environment at 11.02 and we are good to go. <clears throat> okay, we can uh, we don't need to be root to uh, do the install for Gidra, so we can exit that. And I have it right here in my downloads directory and I'm just going to install it right there. You can put it anywhere you want. As long as you have the Java in your path and you can get to the folder, that's all you really need. So uh, let's see, that is a zip, so we're going to unzip it right here. And once it unpacks, that's all that we need to do, pretty much. So it does take up a little bit of space. Alrighty, so we have a folder now for it, so we can just CD into that. And you can see that we have a lot of files in there. There is some documentation. Um, they do actually have pretty good documentation with this. The help file is really good. Um, let's go ahead and run it. So to execute this, we're just going to type in Gidra run. So we'll do a dot slash and hit enter. Okay, we're going to agree to the license. This is just tips that come up. Um, this is the help window right here. So you can kind of keep that up. But we do need to do the the uh, project here and get that started. So we're going to go ahead and close the tips. And there's no no project right now. So what we want to do is a new project. 
Uh, we're not going to do a shared project, although this does have server functionality and you could work all, as a team with other analysts on this. All right, we're going to leave it in the home directory there. We're going to call it test project. And hit finish. Okay, now we don't have any files in there yet. So what we need to do is grab a piece of malware just so we can look at how to quickly get that up and running. So I've already downloaded one from uh, a pretty cool site, uh, DOS Malwork, uh, D-A-S-M-A-L-W-E-R-K-D-E-U. I'm pretty sure it's probably a German site, but he's got a lot of uh, malware listed here that you can download. Um, so we've already got one of them here. We got this one the uh, right here. So we'll unzip it. And the password is infected. It inflates it, and we should now have a file, which we do right here. And it's a dot file. All right, so we'll go back to Gidra. And let's make this a little bigger. And let's go ahead and uh, get into a test project. And we need to import a file. We could have just uh, did a drag and drop. That would have worked uh, just as easily. And right here's our dot file. Select file to import. Is a portable executable for Windows. Uh, it's going into the test project. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And here's a summary of the file. And it gives you a lot of good background information um, to get you started. We're just going to go ahead and click OK. Now, this program should be run with probably a multi-monitor setup so you can have your project on one side and the code browser in another uh, and some of your other tools. But there's a couple of ways that we can get the code browser open. We can take the file and drag it right here, or we can just do file. Um, was it tools? Okay, I think we have to double click it. We'll just drag it up to it. And this will open up the code browser. And it's asking us if we'd like to analyze the file because it has not been analyzed. So we're going to say yes. And uh, you have options here for what analyzers to use. We'll just let it go with the default and hit analyze. And you can see its progress down here. Go ahead and enlarge this. And we get a warning here um, for one of the analyzers probably had an issue. Couldn't find type info. Yep, so we'll just click out of that. And here we go. We've got um, pretty much uh, the, the file is ready for analysis. You can look at the headers of the file. You can just look at pretty much anything you want to. A um, couple of the cool things that you can do that uh, that I uh, typically have found useful. If I can find it. There we go. It's the function graph. Uh, we have to select the function first. If we go right here at the entry point and then hit the function graph, it'll start. It'll give you some of the uh, the layout of the program. If we drop down to the next function and do the same thing, 
and you can see it, it pretty much breaks it out. And of course, you can just use your mouse wheel to scroll in or scroll out as need be. Um, there's, like I said, there's pretty good documentation on this. I've only been playing with this for about a day right now, so uh, I look forward to uh, using this in the coming weeks. Um, if you found this uh, useful, uh, you give it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks.